So before I've even done my intro, the thing I get asked about the most when I fish here is my float rig and how I put it together, how I use it. So while I'm setting up, I might as well show you. Uh, first thing that goes on is a bead, just a six mil hard plastic bead, followed by the float. And what the bead does is stops the float from sliding over the stop knot, which we're eventually gonna tie up the line there. Um, yeah, look at that for a crazy float. If you don't know, uh, my friends bought me a kind of joke Christmas present. It was like a beginner's fishing box set. I've had a couple of floats like this in it that look crazy, but actually I've done the job and I've caught a lot of fish on them so far. So something like that, uh, a pencil float or an inline, um, don't really matter on a lake to be fair. It's just an indication. But yeah, so bead followed by the float. We needed a weight to cock the float. I like an inline type weight and um, these floats, I test them out at home, take about 15 grams to sink them. So this is a 12 gram weight. Now it does have a little bit of rubber there, but if you were to put this on the other way around, you can push that over your swivel to lock the weight in place. But the whole point of the pike rig is that it, it's free flowing, you know, it's no resistance there to the fish. So I leave it just running like that. So the fish hopefully doesn't feel as much of that 12 gram weight. Little bit of rubber, now that can be a bead as well if you wanted it to be. And all that is just something to stop the weight from banging against the knot on your swivel and therefore, you know, loosening up that knot and potentially meaning that you lose a fish. Uh, I won't teach you how to tie a knot, but then you tie your trace on. So there you have it, our trace. Little bit of rubber just to stop the weight from banging against the knot. The float, bead to stop the float from going over the stop knot. Now further up the line, we'll tie our stop knot. Here we go, so I use some just like power gum, something like that. Uh, just something that's a bit thicker, a bit more sort of elastic. In fact, elastic is a good thing to use as well. Just so it doesn't damage the line, it forms a nice big bunched up knot. So you just make a circle, go through the circle and over the main line four or five times, something like that. There we go, that's what sets the depth. So the float can't go over that, that's what cocks it. And um, yeah, I tend to put that two or three foot over depth, just so my bait's lying on the bottom, and then I tighten down to it, and it gives you a really good bite indication. Okay, let's get this out there. So that's it all sitting neatly. I'm gonna go for a bit of bluey to begin with, just fish it closely and over that marginal shelf. So, good morning. Welcome back to the Dangos Outdoors YouTube channel. If you're new around here, ever think about subscribing. I try to put out a video every Sunday morning, so that's what you get in return. And um, as of this morning, we've just gone over 3,000 subscribers. <laughs> and man, am I buzzing about that. That is great, so thank you so much to everyone who's subscribed. Uh, if you haven't yet, get on board with it, because um, yeah, real nice group of guys and, and ladies who watch this, this show and uh, show, channel, videos, whatever. <laughs> leave some really nice comments um, so yeah it's a, it's a nice place to be but anyway so today I'm out pike fishing again uh, I've been doing a lot of pike fishing because it's winter this is the best time for pike fishing and um, yeah I'm on the big pit again regular viewers will know what I'm doing uh, it's what I've had to do a couple of times since lockdown began because um, it's very local to me and with us having to stay local coming here is quite easy uh, but also it snowed uh, two days ago and that's just the kiss of death. And um, it's put about two and a half meters of just snow melt and rubbish in the rivers. Um, so I would rather be on one of those kind of places, but this is a nice place to fall back on. And, and a couple of times I've been here since lockdown began, I haven't blanked. So I'm just doing the exact same thing again. If it's worked twice, it'll work for a third time, I hope. <laughs> um, so yeah, float fishing a bait just over the ledge there and then popping up a bait a little bit further out on a ledger rig which i'll show you all later so yeah i said sorry last time for repeating myself i'm not going to say sorry this time because you guys are like no don't apologize dan it's great <laughs> and so yeah i'm not sorry that i'm here because actually it's a lovely day to be out even though it's all misty and muddy it's quite mild it's only like um six or seven degrees so it's, it's lovely for this time of year um we'll probably get the lure rod out as well quite busy today um there's already about five or six people here. I think that's the sign of the rivers being ruined. Everyone's doing what I'm doing and um, just going on the lakes instead. 
Uh, but yeah, everything's out there, everything's set. I'm going to throw a few bits of fish around my rigs just to get a bit of smell and taste going in the water. And um, yeah, sit back and just have a chill of a day today. I'm not up for rushing about at the moment. Um, yeah, just want to sit down and maybe catch a fish or two. So while it's like this kind of dark, miserable, a bit moody out there, uh, it sort of dawned on me that these are really good conditions for perch. So uh, I've put on a little jig and I'll just cast this around in between the pike rods and things. Just see if I can drum up some little perch or something or maybe a big one if they're out there. The float's just slowly cocked, a little bit of bobbing going on, so we'll see what's happening. Let's do this. Ah. Nah. <laughs> On the other rod. Look at that. Just a <laughs> very small mouth mark there. <laughs> Just a little guy, eh? But we'll get that back out. <laughs> now we have a rod. Oh yeah, fish is still there, let's do this. Yes. We're in. That's not bad. <laughs> there we go, the fish bit didn't fight. I haven't even finished setting up my float rod after that bite and this one was away. <laughs> there we have it, lovely dark one. Unusual for this lake, it didn't fight at all. But what are you gonna give me for that? Four or five pounds, something like that? Brilliant to have two bites already. Don't think it's the same fish twice. I think that first fish was a lot smaller. But yeah, brilliant. Nice to get one on a popped up bait. Normally it's a float that does all the action on here, but I'm um, doing it a little bit differently this time, so I'll show you that later. Fantastic, great to get off a mark and <laughs> we've not blanked today. Brilliant. I hate it when I wake up and I see that the rivers are still ruined because they I always think, oh, I'll go on a lake and you know, might catch, but yeah, we have done. Look at that tail. It's a lovely fish, almost like a koi pike. <laughs> Let's pop this one back. Okay, strange goings on out here today. Um, so I put that fish back and then I was just chat, chatting to an angler who came around lure fishing and um, my pollen, because I'm using pollen, has just floated back up to the surface and there's a huge swirl right at it. So I think a pike tried to take it off the top and didn't manage to get it so it's still floating around out there. So I thought well before I cast my rod back out I'll um, chuck my lure around it a few times. If it's an active fish in the area maybe I'll, I'll hook it or something. Um, which I think happened because I did hook a fish and it was a decent fish. It felt like I just run into weed. It just loaded up everything solid and I was pulling like I was in weed and then it started hitting back and then just came off. So I think, yeah, it was a big fish, but it's quite a small lure. So it's probably just like nicked in there. Me, such a big fish. It's just gone bah, and got rid of it. Um, so yeah, anyway, I'm popping up baits and the last couple of times I was here, I used a red poly ball to pop up my hook bait and I caught nothing on it. Didn't even get a bite or anything. So I thought I need to do this a bit, you know, more subtly. 
uh, perhaps that big red ball is, is putting them off. So what I'm using is pollens. And um, if you don't know, they are naturally buoyant. Um, something to do with when they're caught, they're caught at depth, they come up, the swim bladder expands. So there's like an air pocket trapped inside the bait. <clears throat> and I've found that some are more buoyant than others. Um, and it seems to be the bigger the bait, the more buoyant it is. So I've got a reasonable size fish here. We'll put this on, I'll test it in the edge. And to be honest, as long as it's floating-ish, even if it's just really slow sinking, that's fine for me. As long as it just comes to settle above that weed, that's fine. And to aid that, I've got a long link of line down to my ledge of air. So this can all sink into the weed and then that can stay above it, hopefully. And what's funny is, like I say, last couple of times I was here, had a pop-up out, nothing on it. This time, straight away. So yeah, I think there's something in it. Right, let's get that back out there. Yeah, that pollen's a floater for sure. No, it's working perfectly as well because when I release a loop of line from the reel, it tightens up again. So the bait is trying to get back towards the surface, pulling it all tight. So yeah, that's a good one. Well, by repeatedly casting my lure at it, I've managed to get my pollen back. <laughs> Brilliant, still floating. We went through a spell there where we had three bites, if you include the one on the lure, uh, but sort of three quarters of an hour later now everything's still quiet so i'm just going to throw a few bits of fish around it it's just bits and pieces like the heads and stuff off old baits uh, or baits when i wound them in and there's nothing really wrong with them i just don't really want to use them as a hook bait again i'll chop them up and save them for next time so yeah maybe six or eight pieces of fish just around the float and a bit further around my popped up bait see if we can get some fish interested <laughs> it's not often on the float that they set the alarm off. I think it's dropped it. Yeah, there was a moment where the fish pulled the line out of the clip and I, I grabbed the rod and uh, I felt a bump and I think that was a bit too much resistance for the fish and it spat it back out. Uh, so I'll put it back on that spot and hope it comes back. Yeah, I blame that one on myself. When I grabbed the rod, I grabbed the spool and uh, it was just as a fish yanked the float under, set the alarm off and everything went. So kind of like jolted the fish and it must have just been like that. Ah, no, <laughs> I'm not having that. Spat it back out. Having said that, it's away again. Oh my God. I don't know what's going on here. Let's just wind down. This one was messing with it for ages. Well, at least we're getting a fight this time. Oh. <laughs> a little bit of a better fish, that one but 
you can tell loads of cold snow melt's gone in because um, again not fighting at all the bite just really slow just barely moving the flow uh, i'm pretty sure it's probably the same fish that took it the first time it was maybe a little bit wary and the birds are kicking off Okay, fish number two. I think this one is ever so slightly bigger, so I've got my mat and everything all set up. Um, yeah, I don't know why they're not fighting today. I can only put it down to the fact that, um, yeah, all that cold snow that's gone in and um, the water's actually really murky as well. So maybe with them being so used to clear water, they don't like not seeing where they're going. <laughs> Just a theory anyway, we'll, we'll get this fish out. There we go. So if that last one was four or five pounds, I think we'll say that's uh, six, seven, maybe eight, something like that. Big head on it, so I think it's actually quite an old fish. It is a little bit like, um, a bit warty on the fins. So I think this is an old male. Yeah, definitely. But still gorgeous fish. Really golden, this one. That's fantastic. Cold winter's day, two fish deep. It's not even lunchtime yet. Man, this fish is ace. It's really gold on its gilk gill cover there gill plate gill cover man you're lovely mate big male i think big old male <laughs> yeah, let's pop this one back i think i've underestimated it i just took a look at it on the mat and it was like the full length of the mat so i think it's more like nine pounds maybe this one anyway <laughs> There's nothing in the water and goes mental in the net. Go on. Yes. Okay, let's put this one back out. And that was so funny. So we got that really positive take, uh, which I messed up. And then to get just a really subtle take, wind down and find that there is a fish there and it's on, it's quite a nice one. But yeah, we'll put this bait back in the same area. And I've said this a few times, but I love a bait when it's already had a fish on it. Look at that, that'll be kicking off so much oil and blood and smell down there. And it's still pretty much its original shape. You know, you just can't replicate that with a, a knife and scissors. Perfect. Well, you wouldn't believe it. The Rosas <laughs> have just turned up. The police. Of course, they were nowhere to be seen before Christmas when people were threatening to kill each other in my shop. But, um, you know, you come out fishing and here they are. I hope they don't come round and bother me. They seem to be checking licenses on cars at the moment. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm within the rules. In fact, I, I know I am, but it's how do you interpret them and uh, how busy are they today? And <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Oh, we're going back to the van now. You might be able to see. Well, probably not, but yeah, just somewhere around there. Good old paddy wagon. <coughs> In general, uh, I don't mind the police. I just quite like them. I've had some good, good experiences with them, um, helping us out when we've been robbed and things. But um, yeah. I just think they're trying to do a job of uh, hundreds of people with probably about 10 of them. So yeah, they're well up against it at the moment. So shout out, just stay over there, please. <laughs> well, there we go. Does that mean I can put Cops Called in the title of a video? <laughs> um, always gets more views. In fact, I think some of the million view fishing videos all have their uh, Cops Called in the um, title, but now I'm pretty sure what they did was check the licenses on the couple of cars that are still there, one of them being mine. And uh, from that, they must have been able to know where we were uh, registered to. So yeah, they've gone off now. So word of warning guys, they are out there, they are doing it, they are checking. Um, probably doing it just like that, just going into the car park and doing the, the licenses instead. Uh, yeah, so they must have been relatively satisfied that none of us are, are breaking the rules, which is great. So, yep, as always, there'll be a link in the description to the Angling Trust website so you can um, check that you are doing things by the rules. Um, you know, I don't want to really give too much advice because I'm not in a position to. Uh, so you can look at it on there and decide for yourselves. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. 
<laughs> Gotta take on film. Good on it. Well, be big. There we go, fish number three. Eh, another jack, I'll admit that, but um, maybe five or six pounds, something like that. And actually the hardest fighter of all the fish today. And you know, it's a cold winter's day, so to be able to come out and catch three really nice fish, that is brilliant. And uh, I think I said it before, but I've got about another three or four hours to go. That's fantastic. On the popped up pollen. Pollen pincher. Lovely. Simply lovely. Well, I'm going to use a mat to put this one back. Uh, a load of brambles and reeds and stuff caught in my net and I just don't fancy it, so we'll just use this. VIP, oh, <laughs> VIP treatment for that one. Oh yeah. So I've just repositioned my popped up rod now and uh, this is a, the pollen that I caught my first fish on and then retrieved afterwards. So um, yeah, it still looks great, smells great. Well, not really, but <laughs> to a fish it does. So we'll get it back out there. Okay, time for a tactical change. So I'm gonna take this battered old bluey off. Um, it's done me a fish, but I think it's pretty much washed out now. Um, I'm gonna to change to drifting a roach. This is something I've done the past couple of times I've come about this point in the day. Now the wind's up a bit more, it'll work a lot better. So, got a roach there. One on its back, then the other one just towards the head somewhere. Admittedly, this roach is a little bit small for this, but I've only got two left. <laughs> and the other one's a bit bigger, so we'll try this little one first. See if it uh, produces for us. There we go. So this is now set to be about two or three foot off the bottom, I think. It takes a few goes to get it right. You have to move your stop knot up and down a lot, but we'll cast it out. This will now suspend above the weed, and maybe that more active approach will catch us a fish. So the wind's coming right to left, so I'm going to throw this one quite far up to the right and then let it drift past me. Then this time, no sink in the line, it'll kind of defeat the point of having a drifting rig. So I'll just put it on a rod rest there with a rod tip up high so it can catch the wind and move around. So we're now into what will probably be the last hour of a session. What I've done is I've put that roach, I've just used it as a bottom bait, put it back on the deck, just over the marginal shelf there. Uh, and then we popped up pollen, has come a little bit closer in to kind of the area I've been getting the bites. I was casting that bait around a bit more just to see if I could um, find some fish further out, but it turns out that most of them are, <laughs> are closer in anyway. Uh, yeah, so maybe an hour, perhaps an hour and a half left to go. Uh, the wind has really died off. It's coming a nice, nice afternoon slash evening here. So 
yeah, we'll see what happens, but um, you know, not too bothered because I caught three really nice fish today. Fantastic. One more fish. Okay. What have we got? The last one. <laughs> oh, I can see it in the water, amazing. Come on then. It's always time for one more. There we have it, our last fish of the day. Um, still got a run out, so you never know, might get another one. But that's another lovely jack. Did, a, did put up a bit of a fight this one. It's fantastic on a cold winter's day to feel that. But yeah, I've just started packing everything away, so I think I'll call it a day. And it's great to finish on the fish, so yeah. Thank you for watching today. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I hope you're all keeping well. Uh, don't forget, I'll put a link to the Angling Trust website below so you can um, find out if you can go fishing or not. Hopefully you can. Uh, but yeah, this seems to be going on for a long time. So let's hope it blows over soon and we can all get back out catching loads of fish. That's a nice one there though, brilliant. Right, I think I'll put this one back and I'll go home myself.